With the basketball? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> fucking jumper. Yeah, like, like, there might be a basketball one, but paying for his wife. Yeah, we you'd be the basketball. Like, just me. You'd be the ultimate. I'm anyway, yeah, sound. Let's get started. You want to get started? Man. What am I supposed to say? No, nah, I'll, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do the segue, boy. Do it. Nah, joking. Um, yeah, but thank you very much for coming around, mate. It's nice to see you. You're welcome. I'm mate, looking yeah. forward to a catch up. Yeah, it's well needed. Definitely overdue. Yeah, for sure. Mate. A good old friend of mine. Cheers, <laughs> mate. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's not the alcohol it uh, used to be. Yeah, mate. we're adults <laughs> now, and it's tea and coffee, <laughs> which. Exactly, and it's early in the morning. Like yeah. we're doing an early. Well, one. earlier than yeah. I would usually go to work, so. There you go. So this is, why this is what you mean it. to me, mate. Thank you very much. Um, I thought we'd get started. I actually think that I've came up with one of the best nicknames of all time for you. Has, and when you yeah. walked in and you seen the notes, you're like, nickname? I was like, what nickname? I and don't have any nicknames. Because he likes to forget what happened. But I, do. I, I push it back. I push it to the back of my mind because it's PTSD. And it's such a good nickname because it's, it's Slammy D, yeah? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I'm the only yeah. person who calls me it. And... Um, I think if you heard someone was called Slammy D, you'd think, oh, he must be very promiscuous. Or yeah, it sounds kind of sexual, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. But it's not. Go it's, on, take it away. It's, it's idiotic, if anything. A lot of people want to know what happened that day, mate. They do. <laughs> Don't take me back there, Josh. Um, oh, well, you would have been in year five because I was in year six when it happened. I saw it. You saw it? Babe. Yeah, I Did saw you getting else? carried away. I was getting carried away because my mum didn't raise a quitter, right? So, <laughs> picture it. Where is it? We're in the Rouge Bullion playground. Yep. And there's a basketball hoop up on the wall. A high. Je- quite high up. Yeah, yeah. A high for me because I was a small child. Yeah, very well, high. What were we like, 10 years old in year six? Going 10 to 11 and I was definitely 10. And I was about five foot two until about... 16. <laughs> yeah, same. I was a bit of a this, this is why I got knee problems, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a shed adjacent to the basketball hoop. So where it is? And I thought, I'm not tall enough to slam dunk this, but the shed is tall enough for me to get a run up off it. There you go. So I, I had a couple of goes at it. You know, I think I had a couple of run ups at it, then go into it. Well, it wasn't first take. Nah, nah, nah. Wow. This is the worst part about it. Which See, I'm, I'm learning things. Yeah, I'm right. Learning. There's new things to <laughs> it. I like so the shed is here, and the basketball hoops on the wall. But obviously, the projection that you're running at, if you're gonna jump onto something that's equal, like to it, or lower, you know, not high. Oh, I don't know. Even if it's higher, depending on what speed you're coming at, I've got a basketball in my hand and going to slam dunk onto it, coming at it. And I swing back. The first time I landed on it and I grabbed it, I swung all the way back and I landed right on my spine. And I was just like, I think I broke my back. I remember John Morris being there. John Morris was there as well. And I was just like running around like, I can't feel my back. (laughs) I've done it in, like I've I've broken my back. So let me try again, yeah? (laughs) So let me try again. So my mama didn't raise a quit, like we said. So I went up there. And went for it again after I could feel my leg. I've sat, I'm running around thinking I've broken my back, but obviously I haven't. I'm just like, it's sore. I landed I like... I spinal. <laughs> spinal. <laughs> like straight in a coffin, mate. I went like straight back and just landed on my back. <laughs> and then I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll give it... A, oh, mate, it was bad. I would love, I would love for that to have some CCTV. Some footage. Yeah. And then I went up for it again. And I gave it my all. The little, little, little did I know that, that I think they greased the basketball hoops and no one could slam dunk it. It was a setup. It was a setup. <laughs> Mr. Atkinson. <laughs> Mr. Atkinson, God rest his soul. He, he set me up. It Him. Did. Or, who was the head teacher? What was Spate? It? Mr. Spate. Yeah. He had it in for me. Mr. Spate, did he? We've got a Rouge Billy on Conspiracy on the oh go. Oh my God, we might, by the way. Oh this pod's God. changing. I know. <laughs> the Bridge Bully it's a Netflix show. This is the theory, beginning yeah. of a new Netflix show, actually. Oh my God, Jersey Conspiracies <laughs> in the school. But it was greased up. I don't know if we found that out after. Right. <laughs> or whether it was from that day. Part of the investigation. After that, yeah, because people like me did stuff like that. <laughs> but I, I had ambition, is what I had. Yeah. And I went and did it again. And I did like a. I grabbed onto it. And did a full backflip and yeah. I landed on my face. You like did. Onto my face. My teeth went through my lip. Yeah. I got this scar here. <laughs> yeah, I got it's, it's uh, a scar two yeah, lines I can see it. down here. Yeah, mate. I got two lines through here and I got four stitches in my face here. Four on the inside because my tooth went through it. I sprained my wrist and I sprained my jaw. 
wow. as well. And I don't actually, I think it was when I got no I got knocked out. So I don't really remember hitting the floor, but I remember just being in like a pool of blood. Yeah. It's, so, a, it's an infamous Rouge Bully on like notorious story that mate, everyone yeah, seems to Apparently they used to tell people it like years after as well. Like Some mythos. Slammy like, D, yeah. Ele- I was a legend. Urban legend. Yeah, they would yeah. tell people in like assemblies and that. Yeah. I mean, not to go do it because... Well, I have a memory of it, mate. I was on the playground, bro. So I saw you, you know, getting carried out <laughs> by teachers. <laughs> My first like, time I had to pass through me like this. Carried out, bloodied up. Just and then I didn't see you. A warrior. You. Yeah, Let's a warrior. Go. Well, that's what it's a great segue because what we'll get to in a minute, I felt it it set the precedent for the rest of your life, my friend. You love getting hit in the face. I, I love getting <laughs> my face do. smashed it and getting scars on it. Yeah. Um, but we didn't see. I didn't see you for years. We never really had a friendship post. Well, we didn't. We weren't friends in school anyway. Yeah, we well, didn't. Yeah. We went to different schools. We knew each other. We'd always known each other because you were in school with my sister and like my mum had known like. My your dad. Mom, yeah, your dad and like yeah. your brand and stuff like that as well. Well, so exactly. Like, every time I would see you, it's always like friendly and mutual and that, but it's never like a proper hangout, hangout until we were a little bit older and that. And then we started rocking up to festivals yeah, I'd separately say. and kind yeah, of just joy and teams. Yeah, well, yeah. the first one was what? Isle of Wight, wasn't it? Isle of Wight. When I was with Reddin. Joe Brophy and... Oh, yeah, that was yeah. the early days. Or was it Redden? No, because I think we went to Isle of Wight first. When oh, it was, was like, like you, a, the Fleetwood Mac one, yeah, yeah, the Fleetwood Mac one that we went to go see that, that three hour set, unbelievable, unbelievable stuff, man. Paolo Natini and that was there, uh, yeah, it was a good, good, uh, good weekend. That was a very good weekend. I yeah, wish, you know, Green Day going all the way this year, are they? They're headlining, yeah. I didn't, uh, I didn't know that. I, I seen the new download one though, it looks okay. That looks really, it, I thought it was gonna be bad. Headliners are a little bit subpar, but. For me, it's yeah. great. Like you got some forty one offspring, exactly, bowling for yeah. soup. Bowling for I'd soup, put them yeah. on in a row and just let me mash out. Like. Exactly, mate. Mate, there's a re- there's a really good one that I have seen in Netherlands that's got exactly the same as that, but it's got like placebo on top of that with um, who else is playing? Some heavy. I seen Corey Taylor's playing. But yeah, I think it's like got Pantera and stuff like that. As Pantera's well. there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I obviously, it's just like you just go for headliners, though, wouldn't you? I do. I think you need to watch them because they put money into like the. Sp- spectacularness of yeah. the but show then you go well. down and you forget like how good some of the other ones are i yeah. remember being at reading with you and i remember you and your brother were like really into 21 pilots at the time and i'd only just heard that like heathen song that had come out and i was like i remember i kept asking ethan to play it like repeatedly yeah. and he was just like he was on up. the orcs was he? yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah someone let ethan on the orcs in the <laughs> middle of the circle and i was obviously just <laughs> bit away with it it was like oh you put that song on keep putting that song on and i just but i'd always forget the name of the song so i'd have to ask him for it as well we went to go watch it and i was like nah i don't mind leaving i think i left i don't know who i left with i think i left with you so i remember being there with you it's me you mahoney jody and stuff like that and we were watching it and i think i left to go watch like gigs or something there's no way I would have came to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah. You, there's no way I would have come to watch gigs. All right, speaking for myself here. Then. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? Well, is that when he was in like a big hamster ball and he right. got his shirt ripped off and he jumped off the thing? They had to call it. They said, "Oh, we've been told to stop the show. Yeah, it's yeah, over. See? It's over." Yeah. And I left just before that. Ah. Oh, yeah. I think now I was I there. Know. I was there. Yeah. Yeah. You can watch all that on YouTube. It's sick. He has to cool it off. He has to cool yeah, it. Off. They, so they crazy. told me to stop the show. It's over. We're done. Like. And then after that, I started getting into them loads. I was listening out to them like flat out. And I was just like, oh, for fuck's sake, that's happened loads. Yeah, mate. I, like, I've it, loved their ascension from like yeah, being yeah. unpopular to being popular, man. What was that? What's that album with Ride on it? Uh, oh, blurry but, Face? Nah, Blurry Face is the one. Blurry Face has Ride on it, though. No, uh, Radio, that car radio song. Oh yeah, vessel. Vessel, that's yeah. it. Yeah, and it's got those two like older people on the front, which is there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That from there and like upward has been really cool. Yeah, but anyway, we seen we we started seeing each other again at festies, and I don't know, why, I just kind of started calling you Slammy D. I think I got you to relive the incident to yeah. a, to a festival crowd like I always do. Nah, you probably yeah, hate like me now. Yeah, you I'm probably hate the, me. You're I'm like out my trauma to everyone. <laughs> but that's what is that's what I'm here for. I'm an entertainer. But yeah, mate. So and then. Post that we just we started hanging around yeah. a bit, yeah, mate? like just sharing a love for music and oh yeah, well yeah, uh, the concluding sh- segment of this pod we're gonna j- jam out, like. just shooting shit and stuff together and just yeah, we've always just got along, mate. So yeah, it was an easy chat. So 
Yeah, we're there. very open and honest people, mate. Yeah, I think you're very sure. open and honest. I am, mate. Yeah, but I, I, I think this is something that I've like had to like grow into, which like obviously being away and stuff like that is. I, w- I wouldn't. I wouldn't say like. If you think about it, mate, you know, it doesn't seem like ages ago, but like, imagine yourself 10 years ago, mm-hmm. like the person you were when we were like 18, 19. I know. I'm I a did. completely different person. Oh, man, I've shedded my skin a couple of times since yeah, then. Like. Yeah, I remember speaking to one of my close friends and he, he sh- I showed a photo of him and he was like, I've been like four different people since then. <laughs> I was like, I've, I've always been like the same person, but I'm just like a bit more like switch. I was speaking to someone from the gym last night and he's... I forget like when I'm training with someone and you get to like punch someone in the face, <laughs> you forget they're like 17. And I was like, damn, I'm like 12 years older than you. Yeah. And I was like, when I was 17, it was like nothing like this. You know what I mean? He's like a man. And I was like, I was, I was nothing like you at 17. Yeah. Yeah. Was I was weird. still a little boy. Oh mate. Yeah, for sure. I don't know what they're feeding the kids these days. I know. There's something like, in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think man. I know what it's like. <laughs> it's MSG. All the chemicals that they're putting in. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, but we can go into Muay Thai then because I think that you personally, mate, go through some of the most violent fights I've seen out of all the people I know that get into martial arts and that get into fighting. Like, tell me, mate, like, what's it like going to war, man? Do you know what? Like I was saying like earlier to you, I'm not like, I'm not an aggressive person. I don't know, like, when when I was younger, I'd obviously have, like, little anger issues and that. Like, here, like, I had to, like, be on ADHD medication from like a younger age and stuff like that. But I don't know whether that's just because it was a thing of the time and I was like a misbehaved child and stuff like that. Well, I was just a child who was having to sit through learning maths and stuff. Yeah. He's got ADHD, but he's just bored <laughs> and doesn't want to learn it. Like, yeah, so you know, medicate I mean, that kid so he sits yeah, still. Medicate like, a seven makes my day <laughs> easier. <laughs> exactly. That's it. Medicate this child up to his like <laughs> eyeballs and written in and just let him just. <laughs> in the class oh my god look at him he's concentrating so well like, that's brutal isn't it I yeah. said, wait I'm not gonna lie some of my earlier years I don't remember too much of it and I wonder if that's from like a medication thing and I wouldn't necessarily like blame my mother from it because she's just someone who as like a single parent at the time would have just been like easily persuaded by like some doctors being taking like, advice yeah take this advice give your kid these fucking drugs and then it'll make him better and she's probably like someone save me from this little rat but like yeah I've, I've never been like an aggressive person who's always wanted to fight I'll be someone who would like lose on his like Xbox game and be like oh, and just yeah. like scream around and stuff like that but apart from that I was never really someone who wanted to do that but like I'm not gonna like every time I fight I shit my pants Oh, yeah. Every single time, yeah. This this last fight, which I ended up losing and got a big new scar from, yeah, was like pretty. Like I wasn't as scared that time as well, and I don't know if it was stuff like I was trying to work on like positive like affirmation and stuff like that. You know, like speaking into some like good words. Law and of stuff. attraction, speak yeah, stuff into yeah. existence. Like, yeah, There's a lot of stuff like that in like the fight game which people use, and you know, and um. That time I didn't feel as nervous, but mate, I've like been sick before fights. Like I realized that you need to go to the toilet loads and stuff. And people say it gets easier. Like I've, like you were saying, like I've had a lot of brutal fights, but like, I've yeah, I kind of jumped into the deep end. Which over here, you know, there's like there's N class, C class, B class, and A class. So N class would be five one and a half minute rounds, and you wear shin pads. Then C classes, you take the shin pads off. B class, you're allowed to knee to the head. And then A class is like full tie <laughs> rules. I know, yeah. Imagine kneeing to the head. Even knee to the head sounds crazy. I know, that's brutal. And then it, like the time goes up as well. So you end up just fighting like full professional rounds, which is like five, three minutes. Right. But because when I went to Thailand to go teach English, and I thought, I'm going to go get a, see if I can fight out here. And they chucked me into a professional fight. And I was like, there's no point going back now, is there? So, oh, I see. So you had a professional fight. Me? Yeah. In my last... Majority of my fights have been professional. Nice. Yeah, I know, yeah. So all the ones over here and in Thailand are classed as professional. Yeah, so... Do you find the Thailand fights a little bit more hectic? Because I feel they're more conditioned and they're, they're a bit... Oh, like they've been doing it their whole life, right? And you're yeah. in a foreign place, so you don't really speak their language. Yeah. Do you know what? Like the first one I had... When it, which was technically my first professional one because that's what so so A class yeah is like elbows knees of the head like everything that is 
what you would fight over here and they would class as professional, but that's just normal Muay Thai over there. So eight-year-olds would do that. Excuse me. Eight-year-olds would do that when they're over there, but you have to work yourself up over here. You know, you would go through those little segments to get you used to it. And you normally fight a class after about like 10 to 15 fights. I had five or six Damn. and yeah. I went to, I went into a class and just, fought some kid who had like 30 odd fights from Uzbekistan mm-hmm. and he ended up spinning back kicking me and just like broke my ribs I was like oh sounds broke your ribs <laughs> yeah he broke my ribs I remember my, my mate Andre was over at the time you know him right yeah yeah and he was over in Bangkok me at the time and I was teaching at this school but I was living on campus like this like I was basically in like a single bedroom for like 11 months on campus of the school and I couldn't lay down. So I had to like sleep with a pillow, like on my desk under my chin, like up here. For the night, it was brutal. I couldn't lay down because my ribs were so bad. Oh my God. But from then, that, that point on, I've just had like, yeah, brutal fights. Because that was the first fight before COVID. So then I had a two year break. And then when I went out to Thiland, you remember when I, when I was training in Koh Samiri and stuff and I was on TV when my face were like fully smashed up? They had to find a replacement for someone who pulled out for me. And little little did I know this guy had like 300 odd fights. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, they threw you to the wolves at that one. They, right? made, they really threw me to the wolves. I've got this guy on Facebook and stuff now. And like, if I've ever seen him again, he's like said hello to me. That's good. But there's like, <laughs> when I added him, I was like, is this the same guy? And he's got like this MX Stadium bell, which is like the small glove ones. And he's got like a certificate for like 400,000 baht of like gold confetti coming down. <laughs> and Wait paid. a minute. I know, you know, I was like, what's this? This is my seventh fight. And this guy's, he's been fighting in Lumpini and all the big stadiums like 20 years ago. And I was like, just because he like looked old doesn't mean when this guy was fighting me. Yeah, I head kicked him in the first round and it wobbled him. And straight after that, he was trying to tear my face off. Like straight away, yeah, I remember he grabbed my kick, punched my stomach and just like elbowed me right in the face. And I was like, oh, here we go. Yeah, it was brutal. Leveled up. It was so bad. I got 20 stitches that fight. 20? St- yeah, my yeah. first time. On where, like, your eye? Yeah, I got, what do I, I don't know if this is going to add up. So I got eight here, two here, seven here, and then another two up here. Is that the like most recent one? No, no, that was uh, my first one on TV in Thailand. Because I had a goal. I was like, I'm going to work up in a few little local stadiums. Send me some photos of that. Yeah. Because I, I love your bruised up photos because <laughs> you look like such a warrior and I'm going to whack them there for other people yeah, to see. Yeah, I'll show you that one. That was on Super Champ, so that wasn't... You, you know, going back saying like you get nervous or you always get nervous, you, know, you yeah, get a little yeah. bit anxious prior to fights. Do you feel that's more amplified during the walkout and the pre and having to wait? Or once you're in there, does it settle down or does it not really leave until you're back home or something? Once I'm in the ring, yeah, it's fine. Because it's like... How do you switch? You're in here now. Now, I get a bit nervous as I'm walking together. Like, when I'm walking there, it's waiting out back. And then once I've got my gloves on, I'm like, there's no going back. Because they're laced up, they're done. You can't even go for a piss at that point. And it's like... I'm in the ring. Yeah, I've, I've got to go. I remember I remember that one on Super Chat when I was waiting. You're watching fights going on and you're sitting out back and they're like telling you to come out because it's all on like Thai TV and all that. And I was like, I'm going to work myself up to this. And they're just like, right, you're getting straight on it because it's the only fights that were going on during COVID. And I was like, I can do this, three <laughs> rounds. And like, I held my own against someone who had like 300 odd fights and all that, but he did mash me up to be fair. Does that come with a little bit of like notoriety from the locals then? Do you walk around and they're like, there's the, the crazy little English dude? <laughs> I, I got a bit of respect after the fight, to be fair. Like people who had seen it and like, yeah, he, he's like I was saying, he's always nice to me and stuff like that as well. And you, you tend to see some of the same people who are there. He actually, this guy actually owns a gym or is like a trainer at a gym in Koh Samui and all that as well. I was like, I don't, why am I fighting a trainer of a gym? I'm going to Thailand to like train. <laughs> to learn. Yeah, and I'm basically fighting people who I'm training with. I was like, this isn't good. <laughs> Treating me as cannon for he, This is it, mate. Yeah, they're just throwing me to the wolves. Because this, so, this show, Super Champ, if you ask me, well, there's people who... Like Westerners will go fight on it. It's always Westerner versus Thai. Oh, okay. It's like Thai propaganda, mate. <laughs> There's a show called Thai Fight. And it's like Crud Chuck or something like that. I thought, 
mints in the name of it. But it's just ropes. They use hemp ropes to fight with. Yeah. So they use bare knuckle and they use ropes. <laughs> and it's always like the most elite Thai person fighting against like an average Westerner and they just <laughs> mash them up. That's yeah. not so that's what's happened to me on that show. And I was just like fed to the wolves. Learn your lesson. Yeah. yeah my, my, do you know what made it worse about that time as well? Because it was COVID. We got to the stadium and my coach got COVID. So I didn't even have my person in my corner who'd been training me. Um, and I just had two like random people. Because that's also your hype man, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was the one that would like, you know, slap you, tell you what to do. And I just had two random people in my corner that I'd never met before. And he was going, punch, knee, <laughs> punch, kick. And his English was probably worse than my tie, which is saying something like, my tie's at a good enough level. But at that point, it wasn't great. And I was like, cheers, mate. I don't I'll, know what I'll to try do. that next. So <laughs> I listened to him, yeah. And I was like, right, came in with a jab, went in with a knee. He just elbowed me right across my face and split all this open. And I was like, that didn't work, did it? Yeah. And I was like, I'd never been cut before yet. And there was just like warm blood, like all down my chest and stuff. And I could feel like wind going into it. And I was like, oh my God. Does, does your adrenaline kick in once you start getting rocked? Yeah, I, I think it well, it's fight or flight really at that point, isn't it? You can either go down or it, like fight back. From personal experience then, when you've been hit and it's made you dizzy, is that your chance to say... I'm locked in now, I'm zoned in. Or do you go the other way and you're like, oh, oh this is harder now, this is a lot harder. Because I've tough. never done anything like that. But even through sparring, I know once you get hit and once you get gassed, them two combination of getting out of breath while also being hurt is so much harder than not feeling that way. Yeah, it's tough. It's, de it's definitely something that you like learn over experience and that as well. You know, like I there was a fight I had on Super Champ and I only lost my coach said out of like, my experience in the ring and that right and that's because like this guy was tired and i was beating him on points but he ended up beating me because i was missing kicks and stuff like that as well right but he knew just how if i was gonna kick he would just come out this way and circle off and he was tired at that point but he was just walking away but what like i was mentioning to you just before we started i had a fight at the beginning of the year i think it was january january or february in uh phuket and the guy who was just so much like he was heavier than me. It wasn't even a weight class thing. They just looked at our bellies and they were like, oh, he hasn't <laughs> fought in five months, so you'll be all right. But I only trained for 10 days for that fight. Normally over here, you train for like a minimum of six weeks. Wow. You know, like maybe like once a day, twice a day if you can over here, but you tend to be working over here as well, you know. So over there, it's twice a day, six days a week. But they're like, oh, that's basically four weeks if it's 10 days. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you're doing it twice a day. And um, I don't know if it works that way. Yeah, I don't know if it works like that because he's a big dude. And last time I fought someone who was like Morocco, Uzbekistan, was that the guy who broke my ribs? And I was like, they'd always throw like crazy spinning kickbox and stuff. And I was like, I'm not doing this stuff again. Like he was like, you have a warm up fight, you haven't fought in a few months. We'll test you out, see what you like for the gym. He ended up being all right, yeah, but he had good boxing, and we were wearing those six ounce gloves I was on about that had been through the ringer. They were like oven mitts, mate. And he uppercut me, yeah. And as soon as he uppercut me, I thought I was going to boff. No. Like, I got like a concussion straight away. He hit me, yeah. And I was, I remember going back. There's a video of it somewhere on YouTube. And I'm like gagging on my gum shirt. I'm like, <laughs> he's hit you. Like, if you hit your head off the floor and you like start feeling sick. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was like that. And I was like, I'm going to boff, like in the ring everywhere. And I remember like, I managed to get hold of him and just like get my breath. And then I just elbowed him in the face and cut him open. And then after that, it like kind of gone. So that's what I mean. It's like fight or flight, you know, and you start to learn. But there's times where I've been rocked and you've either got to weather the storm or, yeah. You're just begging for that round to end. Yeah, some, yeah, you are, to be honest. Take me back to that corner so I can have a breather. How long do you get, how long's the break between rounds? Uh, when you're fighting A class, it's two minutes. Two minutes? Yeah. Which makes me respect stuff like UFC even more, mate, because they do a five-minute round with a one-minute break. Yeah. When you fight like a three-minute round and you're going for it, you realise how tired you are. You know, like even on pads or something like that, three minutes is such a long time just to be swinging at someone. Yeah, especially like the latter minutes, do you know what I mean? Though? Yeah. Um, but towards the end of a four or five-minute round. Oh, mate, yeah, when for you sure. you have to stare at the beast, man. Oh, mate, yeah, you've got to go through something. There's times where I thought, like, I'm not going to make this. There was this one fight when I had... So I had that one when I thought he was going to, like, knock me out because I was sick. And I ended up getting a draw, which was very questionable because of the... Uh, I dropped him as well in the fourth round with a head kick. And then 
I think it was just because there was loads of betters in the stadium and it wasn't for me, so it would have upset a lot of people and they just gave a draw, which I was like, it's robbery, but whatever. I thought two weeks later after that, so I had three fights and like, sorry, two fights in three weeks and my legs were like spaghetti going into that because my shins were still so swollen from the other one. And I ended up getting this big old cut down my forehead. You know, I got that big scar down here, that little Harry Potter scar. <laughs> And yeah, I needed nine stitches for that one. But that happened in the... Th- I know, mate, it was so bad. The doctor must hate you. I, yeah, mate, he, he actually... The doctor's really nice. He's always checking, how's it healing? Is it all right? And I was like, everyone's like, how do you know that guy? I was like, it's not a guy you want to know. Like, do you know what I mean? I'd prefer if I didn't know him. He's, he's a nice guy, but I don't want to know him. Like, yeah, I know yeah. him for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. But like, I had that and he split my head open in the third round. So I had to fight another like... That was at the beginning of the third round. So I basically fought three rounds with just like blood going all over my face and I couldn't see anything, you know. And at that point, you're just like, you got to fight back. Otherwise, well, you're going to end up in a worse position. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You either do that or you give up. And I'd rather have a hole in my head and carry on and look like I've given it a go than me. I, I respect you, mate. That's an insane mate, amount of confidence. But mate. I don't like, see, watching it, I hate watching it. You don't like watching it? I hate it. watching it, yeah, because it just scares me. But when I'm in there, I know that I've got like the skill set to like to be able to defend myself. But I won't want to have a fight on the street. I don't really. I like watching it sometimes, technically, in that. But then when I know I've got a fight coming up and I'm watching it, I'm like, that's a bit quick pace. I don't know if I've got the energy for that. Yeah. There's nothing. Nothing scares me more than being tired in a fight. I've had a few losses, so that like I'm obviously scared of losing. I don't want to lose. The only two things that scare me are losing and getting out of breath. And there's nothing worse than if you're tired in a ring. And someone is trying to knock you out. Like, you know, it's not like inspiring when someone will give you a little break or something like that. They're going to do you. Yeah, it's petrifying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they want you to go down. You can either go to your knees and give up or fight back. And like, I've thrown up in the ring before. <laughs> yeah. It's like being tired and I'm just like, <laughs> and just like carried on and just like put it back in. It's admirable, mate. Trying to persevere through that sort of violence. It's, sc- it's scary, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where I've got it from because it's definitely not something I've been through before that as well, but it's just like a... It's from the day, term. it's from the basketball league. <laughs> That's it, mate. Everything in life does a 360. We've been through this before. It's repercussions. Like, um, yeah. What, how's the calm down then after the fight? Because that must be so adrenaline filled that post it, it's like, it must be a little bit like coming off stage for a rock star. Do you know what I mean? Sure, when you mate. get home, mate, is your head not ringing? Like, how do you go back into I a room sleep. after being in a, like a stadium full of people getting hit? Mate, I don't sleep at all. No. Yeah, even if there hasn't been a lot of people. Like the ones that are on TV, it was like, seemed like there was a lot of people there. But like, just the adrenaline of fighting. I stay up to like six in the morning every time I fight. For sure. Like, I don't think <laughs> Yeah. I don't know why. There's never like a fight that I've gone to bed earlier than like 5 a.m., I'd say. I mean, I just sit up there and I look back at stuff. And especially being like different time zones. So people will be waking up and I'll be like speaking to them and that as well. But I can't sleep. Like, I'm just going through it in my head. I like yeah. just injured there and stuff. I remember after my first fight finished, and that was only five one and a half minute rounds. And that's why I was saying I'm being scared of being tired. Excuse me, because after that, I, I had two rounds in me, yeah. And then after that, it was just survival mode. I was like, <laughs> I'm so tired. I went to Amsterdam halfway through a fight camp, and I'll never do that again. <laughs> never, yeah. Mate, yeah. Oh my. <laughs> and I was, yeah, yeah, it was just, I'll go for a run. And I was like, Oh, I just have a bong instead. <laughs> and then when it came to fight, the actual fight night, I just got mauled. Did you? Yeah. yeah. So you have to take your fighting kind of serious as possible. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Like if you're, if you're not training as hard as you can for it, you've already lost. Like, do you know what I mean? Because the person is going to be doing more than you, you know? Well, that's it, isn't it? <clears throat> is that strenuous on your mind then, I guess? Because obviously when, you know, getting ready for a fight, getting your head into the game, uh, going through fight camp, eating properly, uh, doing everything you need to do for that period of time, going into the fight, ha- being nervous and anxious, compared to just living a life where you don't do any of that, which for some months you get because you're not fighting, right? The, what's yeah. the comparison between having to go through all of that and then just not, you know, the days when you're just not being an MMA so, fighter and you're just going through life? Is it a lot more peaceful or what, what's the difference? Oh, mate, do you, do you know what it is? Because, like, I've, I was actually thinking about this not too long ago. You know, like, I'm not comparing myself to Mike Tyson. But, you know, like, from when he and Tyson Fury as well, you know, like, they've they have all these fights and they're, like, at the top of their league. 
And then when they got that time off, they just went like flour into like cocaine and like, you know, they were just on their time off. They do like drugs, pie and mm-hmm. stuff like that because they know they've got four weeks right. and then they go straight back through to hell. Because I like I used to be a lot more like on it and stuff like that. But now that I've learned, like, I know how I can cut my weight, you know, after experience. I know what I need to do and to enjoy myself a bit more. But then you're living a life of like you've got to watch your diet, you go to the gym six times a week, either on top of work, and if you're not working, if I'm away, it's twice a, twice a day, six days a week. And it's that. And then the time that you have off, you want to enjoy it. So you just like snack, I don't know, smoke, drink, whatever you do. And then you go straight back into it. So it's like a vicious cycle of it, you know, so you kind of want to enjoy that. But then when I'm not doing that, I'm bored. Right. Like on, on my minimum days now, I train three days, a, three times a week. Yeah, you know, and that was what I would do before a fight. But then if I'm only training three days a week, I feel bored. Right. So I'm used to doing six days. Okay. But then then that comes in with like, I, I checked my weight before I came here. I always know what my weight is. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I know. Oh, that's good, man. I was, I was sixty nine point seven this morning. I'm losing a bit of weight, but I had a big time at Pizza Express last night. <laughs> but I, I, it's bad though because it's a vicious cycle. You don't need to know what your weight is when you're not fighting. Right. You should be enjoying yourself, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm constantly looking. how I know how much I lose when I'm sleeping. I know how much, like, I am when I wake up throughout the day. Oh, I've eaten this much, so I should lose this much over night and stuff like that. And It's, it's like warped your mentality, man. Yeah. you conditioned yeah. yourself to, like, think... you feel guilty for eating certain things, like, I, because you don't want to put on weight. Because I, I, I was, like, I was low the other week, right? And I was like, I could start fighting a little bit lower because I, I put on like a bit of muscle and like was training a little bit more. So I was heavier. And then I used to fight super light. I used to fight like 62 kilos. So when, when, when me and Max fought, I was like super skinny and stuff like that. And I was like, I'm tall for that weight and I'm, you know, I can be quick and stuff like that. And then I'm checking, like I'm enjoying my time off, you know, I'm going away. So I'm, I don't have a fight coming up. I should just be getting back into enjoying my training and stuff like that. But then... If I don't have a fight come up, I'm not enjoying my training, then I'm eating what I want and I feel sluggish and I'm just not falling into it. It's, it's a vicious cycle, man. It's weird. Mate, that is, yeah, that's peculiar. I don't know if you caught the Volkanovski post interview after the Mahachev fight last weekend. It's I the did, UFC but... fights. He basically just said what you said. He's given a post fight interview. He got battered in the first round and he's like one of the main dudes I did, in the yeah, UFC. I've seen the highlights from it. Yeah, um, yeah, but, but he took the it. fight on 10 days notice. He wasn't meant to be fighting. He ended up fighting for the belt. He, he didn't even have a fight coming up. And you know that's quite short to take like a title fight on 10 yeah. days notice. But in, in his post fight in, interview, getting back to what you were saying, he can see him, he's, he's about to cry, but he obviously doesn't want to, so he like swallows his pride a little bit. And he's just saying like, I know I shouldn't have took the fight on 10 days notice, but I did it because when I was sitting still, he's like, and I don't know much about mental health, I've never been through it myself, I'm not someone to get depressed, but this time when I wasn't fighting, when I wasn't in fight camp, when I had nothing to do, he said my head was just all over the place and I've never felt that way. And he's like, I needed to, I needed to be back in into the ring, into fighting. Otherwise, I just felt lost. It, it, yeah, it kind, of, it kind of like gives me purpose to go for it. You know, if I'm thinking, if I'm not fighting, I mean, what's the point in doing it? And then I was speaking to Pedro, like one of the boys I train with and one of like, he coaches me a lot as well. And he's saying like, well, it's, this is just time for you to like get back into it and just like remember why you started it and start enjoying it. Because if I'm thinking, I'm going up there and I'm not fighting, then what's the point? You know, I want to try and rack up as many fights as I got. And I'll push through injuries and stuff like that, you know. Uh, I've got this scar on my face still hurts, and that's two months ago. I tore, like, ligaments in my knee from, like, blocking kicks and all that. And I'm like, nah, I just want to fight. I just want to, like, do it. But I'm only, like, shortening my own, like, career as such by, like, doing it. But then the, the come down from it is crazy, man. After that last fight, because you're gutted in yourself, like, you know that, Sometimes if you lose, you can do better. Like I, I'd never cried after a fight, and I cried in the ring, like straight away. Like when I lost, he he hit me with an elbow up here. And I was starting really well, and I was pretty much we were just piecing each other up. But because it was a longer round than that, you know, the the shorter rounds tend to be quicker and more action packed, and like sometimes the technique will be a bit sloppier. But at that like higher level in the longer rounds, you have to be like crucial with the shots you're throwing because. Say if you leave it a sloppy jab, I'll head kick you, mm. you know, and I'll I'll see that coming on, and mm-hmm. I can take it nice and slow. It's a chess game at that, you know, at that level. Sure. And then he hit me with an elbow, and when he hit, because you can see how high the scar goes up all the way up to here this time as well. You know, this is a brutal one. That was two months ago, and it's still pretty shit. 
but he hit me with it. So his elbow went right into my eyeball and I was like seeing three of him and I couldn't see anything. My knee had like swollen up from like taking leg kicks and I was back in the corner and like my head slipped a bit, which is the first time that had ever happened. And I was like, I've lost, like, I've lost. Like normally, you know, you've seen some of the states I've been in and I've had the cuts on my head and I'm like, right, this guy, you know, you can still yeah. win it back. Even if I know that I've lost, I'm still moping, but I'm still going to fight all the way to the end. I think I'd lost before, like, I was already coming back out because I had that big, like, cut on my, uh, like, in my eye and stuff. And I was just like, I've lost and stuff. Mm. And then after that, I I went down because he, he checked one of my low kicks and it was, like, kicking the corner of, like, a coffee table. <laughs> I was like, oh! <laughs> went, like, straight down with my legs that were already, like, swollen. And then just, like, after it happened, I just sat in the corner and just, like, cried on the floor. And I was like, so I've just let myself down. Like, do you know what I mean? Because I my head went yeah and it's a big like mental game of course it may it's exhausting on your on your mentality it like, is mate it's, it's super you're, exhausting you're tired, yeah it's definitely emotional but what your friend said uh, about giving you advice like remember why you're here remember your enjoyment for it it's such a like yeah. positive thing to remember it's good advice mate because i think i feel we do that as humans quite a lot when we get a new hobby we want to be like the best w- the best at, as at it can, as yeah. quick as possible we know who the the leaders of that field are we look up mm-hmm. to them we watch videos on them whether it's running whether it's learning an instrument whether it's doing fighting or martial arts or whatever so you always compare yourself to someone and you kind of want to be there and in in between that going from like the process of starting to learn it to you let it become intense and i think when you let it become intense your enjoyment yeah. slips away for sure mate yeah and you have to you, remind you take yourself the comp- like you take the fun out of it when you're just thinking about the competition all mm. the time. That's sometimes why I like fighting over there, you know. As long as you give a good fight. See, those fights that I've lost in Thailand and I fought well, they don't care if you lose as long as you fight well. Over here, if you lose, my, my, my trainers don't necessarily care as much if I lose as well as long as I give a good fight because they're just like family to me and they're just, sure. they're always honest and stuff like that. But there's always so much like hype between like fights over here. You know, you've seen it had like fight posters, like, post interview pre-interview and there was like weighing photos and all that in thailand someone's fighting you're sitting outside the ring and they're like get in win lose get out go home when i had that cut on my head and my knee i rode home like in the wind and the wind's like hitting me in my stitches and i was like ah on my own they left and i just went home on my own (laughs) that's pretty insane yeah i did like a 40 minute ride home like should have probably put a helmet on but i couldn't because it would like get caught on my stitches Damn in the man. top yeah you know, so but there's like so much hype to it and there's so much pressure and you just got to remember that you're in it for the fun you know obviously i want to win like i want to mm. win but like there's times when i have to sit back and just have a little think of like how far i've come you know what i mean i know there's <laughs> i well i thought i would have been one of the first people to fight in thai tv representing jersey but there, there's other people who have i think it might Mike, michael blood fought in jersey but like i had I had my jersey flag on next that they were like oh we'll put an england flag on. i said like, don't put an england flag on. i'm not from england all right this is jersey shag so i made sure that was on the tv and stuff like that all right more of this all right, more jersey v, yeah. <laughs> have one of these shag. give him one of them but i was just making sure you know and i was like trying to be proud that i'm like a jersey boy fighting out over there for someone so small and stuff like that yeah so i'm trying to like try and accomplish stuff like you know whilst i'm out there and i take a little step back and i think how far i've come like sure so i've done like a few n class fights and c class and then i've just jumped straight into professional and I've, yeah i've had a few losses and stuff like that but the fights i always give you know are that's a good way brutal fights and that and if you look at it like i've gone from I wasn't even sure if I would ever go to Thailand, man. And I only went, ended up doing Muay Thai because of like a friend of mine, you know, and I went up there. Um, I've, I've always liked martial arts and stuff like that. I would do like karate as a kid. But, you know, if we'd done that as a kid, it was basically dancing at that stage. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> like block and set one with big yeah. old Roy McDonald's, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the most dangerous man on the <laughs> island. You don't hear it from me. But... At that point, I don't know who that is. Like. You don't know who Roy McDonald is? <laughs> no, you, better, is you better lock your doors, mate. He's, he's like the uh, negative some... version of Santa. He uh, comes in uh, your house and nicks stuff. He doesn't put presents in. Oh, does he? Yeah, just trashes the gaff. He kind of trashes the gaff, beats your girlfriend up kicks, and leaves. Kicks he kicks at your parents. Mate, do you remember we used to go to Kemp? I used to go to Kempo when I was younger, yeah. And I would have been like seven or eight at the time, but you would get like a low kick pad, you know, so like one of those like little curvy ones, and he'd line loads of kids up and get them to stand behind it and he just 
push kick it as hard as he could and just make all these kids go <laughs> flying. And this is like a 40 year old man. Now that I'm like training people and like training some of the youngsters now, I'm thinking that's pretty brutal. So if I but post, I respect this, it, if I I post this and I'm walking through King Street and some unknown yeah, ass- fly ass- kicks. assailant <laughs> just puts me through Dombey Hate Swift. Yeah, him, that's man. it. It's going to be him, it's man. Him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's, mate, have a little look who he is after. <laughs> Maybe get a little photo of him. I oh, don't know, because he's like local legend. But no. <laughs> People want to know who he is. Ryan McDonald. But if you think about it, he used to just li- he used to line like these kids up and just get them behind a bag and just welly it and just boot them and they'd all fall over. And be like, ah! and he'd be like, oh, I really like it. Yeah. No, what you said before is true though, mate. Like you do have to, it's a good way to encapsulate it. You have to just take a step back and review yourself sometimes because yeah. it's like, if you put in your own head, yeah, everything you've done or accomplished, fights you've had, wins, losses, it doesn't matter. How different is that from the first ever boy that rocked up to his first Muay Thai lesson? To, I mean, he, you probably would be mesmerized if you knew that's what the future held that's for That's it, mate. That's what I mean. Like I've got like fight posters and stuff. I've all, When I seen, like I thought, in this place called Bangla Stadium. And I've always, I went and watched one of my friends fight there and stuff. And it was like one of the first fights I'd ever seen like live in Thailand. And I was like, whoa, this would be crazy. And that's the place that I ended up like winning the belt and, and had like fights there. Some of my crazy ones in there. And like people like know me there now. And I, I'll get in like, once you fight there, you're getting free. But then people always say hello to me and stuff like that. And it, like I was saying from, from doing that Kempo, and then I started and I thought, oh, I'll finish my degree and stuff. I want to go out and, do a little bit of traveling. I ended up just going to Thailand for three weeks. So I was like, oh, whilst I'm here, I'll practice it. And then after I came back, I was like, I need to go traveling. So I went traveling with the boys now. And I was like, from then on, it's just always been going back. But then from having my first fight out there to now, I, I, Thailand's like home, man. When I'm like here, I feel weird. Over the past like four or five years, I've spent over half of my years there i spent like two and a half three years there over the in past Thailand. five years wow. yeah yeah you have actually you think about it's like year and a half come back for a year and a half year uh four months eight months it's been f- five months this time and i'm gonna go back for like another eight when i leave you know yeah i can for someone who went over there not knowing anything about the culture like my i'd say my tie is like better than the average like foreigner who's over there now and I can like converse my way around like, I'm used to like living over there and well you taught kids in Thailand for a bit right yeah 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 what was Teaching that like English I love it man yeah I was actually thinking about this the other day because I was like if I want to go back out over there you know you're going to want a job you can enjoy and like the kind of like bubbly like personality that I am and stuff like that as well when I'm like teaching people Muay Thai and stuff like that and I'm doing one-to-ones I enjoy like the teaching aspect of it as well and when you're doing it with like little seven, eight year olds or whatever, who are just like always full of energy and I'm <laughs> kind of like that, depending on the day, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's starting to go down a bit of hill like now, you know, I'm not as energetic as I was, but like you can act silly, but you still have like a power of authority and you know, you're just like, it's, it's a, if you act and silly like that in an office, people be like, what are you doing? But yeah, I've got like the kind of bubbly personality and like fun with the kids and stuff like that. It's a job that I enjoy, you know, it's something that I enjoy doing rather than it's rewarding isn't it exactly yeah it's rewarding the kids remember you like i'll I'll go back to the school i was t- teaching just outside of bangkok when i'm over there because some of my friends are there and they all they all just run up to you and they love it and then you see them within like the past two years and they're just like oh you look like different people and they all remember you and stuff like that as class you should play them mr jones by counting crows and say that was wrote about you yeah it was they love it yeah <laughs> they, they went on that they call you mr jones nah it's teacher callum teacher callum teacher callum oh, yeah that's yeah because yeah. yeah. like I don't know, like it would be uh, like Crew Josh or something like that. And Crew means teacher. So they always put like teacher, oh, right. teacher Josh teacher first, first, rather, yeah, which is teacher, teacher <laughs> Kalam. Yeah, yeah. But my name, uh, Kalam, means like cabbage and Thai. Like you say, like Kalam P, which would mean cabbage. It's like a red cabbage or something like that. So <laughs> they just call me teacher cabbage. So like, oh, this is bollocks. Like straight away, I've just yeah, been I'm ripped by like that eight year old kids. Yeah. They're laughing about it's me t- in the playground. Yeah, it's teacher big dog to you. And I won't have any other way. <laughs> yeah, you could tell them what you want, actually, if you're the English teacher. <laughs> yeah, you can go over there and just reinvent yourself. <laughs> yeah. You don't understand what you're saying. Teach them all language. the wrong words. But you'll be surprised at how many of those kids are super smart. My maths isn't up to scratch for a close to 30 year old man. And when you're getting <laughs> corrected in maths by a seven-year-old Thai kid who's not doing it in his own language, it's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, you got to look in the mirror. <laughs> you got to go home and look in the mirror. Like, you're a loser. I need to quit. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you're a fraud. But you're a teacher. You're yeah. A fraud. Nothing but a fraud. That that's it, mate. But that, all they require is uh, like to be educated to like a degree level over there, so you can go over there. You can have like a degree in nail technicians. 
like not that that's a bad degree you know yeah but it gives but you an opportunity it doesn't necessarily mean that you should be a teacher do you know what i mean yeah there's a lot of people out there who are more qualified to be a teacher than me right and then you can just do whatever you want i know people out there that don't have degrees in the yeah. it's the op- land of opportunity mate. yeah, yeah. yeah. you got money over someone, there man. you can do whatever uh, where have you traveled then because you've done a bit of traveling yeah man um where did I go? We, we've been with you in Bangkok as well, actually. Yeah, yeah we were in Bangkok. Had a good night on Koh Sam Road <laughs> once and doing some music. Yeah. That got a bit hectic. That got crazy. Josh got carried away because he was too drunk. As per. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> I'll say that. I'll enjoy the rest of my night. But um, yeah, the first place I'd been to in Asia before was, was Thailand when I said it when I first went out. But apart from that, why are you laughing? Just funny. remembering that night. Yeah, <laughs> just going through that night. Just reminiscing. Just being drunk, shouting at Lincoln. Some Thai guy singing Lincoln Park. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to build an impression. Standing on the table it. in a restaurant. Yeah. I shouldn't be standing on the table. In. Yeah, the restaurant turns into a club at night. So I think he got away with it. Oh, it was all yeah. kosher. But I'm not. Remember it was we, good, mate. He was playing all the bangers as well. And for we, the sound of. Remember, we both got busted there. <laughs> Just looking at me. I'm only a man with a pair of eyes, all right? At the end of the day, that's it. I was looking. You got busted because I was single at the time. Yeah, I, got well. I could look wherever I wanted, <laughs> mate. Whatever lady boy walked past. Yeah. Josh got caught looking at the lady boys. <laughs> nah. No, but um, yeah, but only, only before uh, I first went to Thailand, that was my first time I'd ever been like yeah. out to Asia. I'd been to... Amsterdam multiple times. Is it mostly Asia you've been around and went to? Or? Um, I've been to certain parts. So only recently, with it, last year, when I, after I was living in Koh Samui, I did a little European tour on my way home because I had like a, I came back for my mum's birthday because I'm a good son and surprised her. The woman almost had a heart attack, so I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I couldn't I've do never that. Se- yeah, I've parents. never seen that woman drop her iPad so quick. <laughs> Candy Crush was out the window. Yeah. <laughs> And she almost had a heart attack, broke down in tears. But it was, I ended up doing like a little tour of, whether I, I went like Poland, Czech Republic, Paris. It was like £220 for a flight to Paris from Thailand or like £300 to Gatwick. And I was like, oh, I'm doing that. So yeah, I spent a bit of time in Europe. But when I went out with uh, a few of my friends, we did, uh, where did we go? We started in Thailand, Bali, Malaysia. Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and back to Thailand. But on my own travels, that that's one of the reasons why I like working in the school over there because during that time off, you know, like, as you would know, like, um, you get, obviously, your summer holidays and stuff like that, but the yeah. summer holidays in Thailand are different. I think their summer holidays are... Their summertime is March through to may roughly that's like the hottest periods and then you get all of october they've got like a month of october off so during that time you get paid as well so i went to like japan i went to india i went to australia but only for two weeks in australia i'm not like one of those people who just gone there and never come back <laughs> go there just, just a smaller jersey get well a just a bigger one, jersey yeah, yeah, yeah. you go there and you see everyone from jersey i'm like yeah. no no <laughs> just stay home mate do you want a construction site job in a local pub like absolutely not yeah do you want to go work 12 hours down a mine <laughs> with people you don't like no i just do that here <laughs> yeah. and in office it's like a mine anyway ain't it <laughs> yeah more or less everything's more expensive it's like three quid for a miles bar <laughs> yeah. no. but you get paid like 12 quid i don't care yeah yeah, do. not worth it. yeah 24 uh, hours away from home well, um, where's the best place you went then when you're traveling back through Europe? I was like, through Europe? Oh, do you know what? I, th- I, I really liked, I liked Poland and Czech Republic because I went to Prague. That was pretty good. Prague was really cool, the architecture and stuff. But when I went to Poland, I went there with like the, uh, the mindset to make sure I was going to like Auschwitz and stuff like that because mm-hmm. that was somewhere I've always wanted to go and check out which if you haven't you yeah. should definitely go yeah not because like the people always say oh how was it and you're like it's class but there's nothing class about it you know but it's definitely it's realistic like, isn't it it's really yeah it's it's eerie mate it's mm-hmm. really eerie when you go there and you realize like obviously we've been taught it through school and with our like occupation of the island and stuff so we know like a fair amount about it compared to like say americans and stuff like that who some people say the holocaust didn't even happen come on bro sound yeah, yeah nice yeah. one sure it didn't they're all lies <laughs> but um 
when you go there, you realize like the magnitude of it, and that is pretty insane. I bet. I went, yeah, when I was in Paris as well, I was like, it's just like a French London. Everyone's just angry. And, and it's just like super fast paced, super rat yeah, race yeah. vibe. Just the, do, 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 do. I, I used to like going to London, but it was only just because I would go to gigs and that all the time, you know, and there was no one good would come to Jersey, so you'd have to go to London. But it's only ever good for like three or four days. Then after, you know, you say like, thank you to a bus driver and he looks like he wants to stab you. And you're like, yeah, yeah. So I'll just like. Or you're like, my four months worth of savings now gone, gone after this yeah. weekend. So I'm, I'm just going to go back mosh. home. Yeah, I got a coffee and a baguette and it was like 49 quid. And I was like, oh, it sounds. <laughs> so going back to home. Yeah, where it's 44.50. Yeah, Save I, my pennies. So where have you been? Where have you traveled? I haven't done much traveling, to be honest. I've just been on a few holidays. Traveling's uh, once. It's in the in the path for the future, but we're, we're saving up now. But um, <laughs> say it once. once. Yeah, yeah say yeah. once. I've been to the beach a few times. Now, I've been to Bali. I've been to Thailand. I've been when to Egypt. To Mate, I went to Egypt, yeah. Didn't even see the pyramids. No, I didn't either. <laughs> Why would you? Did you go, who'd you go with? Family? I caught up with my dad over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. I went to a place called Hagada. And it was my mum. And that's my, where we were. Yeah. And yeah, it was, we I went to my mum and my stepdad at the time. And he was probably the one who was organising it all. I don't know why you can go there and not see it. Because that's somewhere I've always wanted to go. That would probably be like one of my dream places. Because I'm a bit of like a history yeah. buff. Started, then me and Mahoney had talked about this actually as well. Starting at the top of the River Nile and work your way down over like the course of three weeks. And just go see all the old stuff. Yeah. All that old shit. Well, we're planning to go to Europe. I just think my problem when I was going to all these beautiful places as like a teenager, I was a bit younger. You don't appreciate it. I don't appreciate it at all. I had no interest in seeing like what I'm interested in now, like the culture, immersing myself in sort of, like you said, the architects and the landscapes and things you really couldn't do anywhere else. Like all these places I've been to, I've just been on nights out over there, do you know what I mean? And a nightclub over there is no different from a nightclub over here. Exactly, yeah. You end up being sick and eating the same food when you're over there. It's like, where should I go? McDonald's. Oh my God, Poland's McDonald's. So good, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like the ketchup tastes funny. You're just prepping for the night. Yeah, yeah. But that's, it's something, that's what I was saying about, like, you don't appreciate it before. Mate, I lived next to La Hugby for like 11 years and I never went there until like just after COVID and I went there. We, Jersey's got some, incredible like heritage like yeah. crazy the hugby's a thousand five hundred years older than the pyramids of giza and that's really hard to like think about if you put that into your head like we think of the pyramids as like ancient civilization even if it was 200 years older you know what i mean that's a long period a thousand five hundred years can you imagine life from a thousand five hundred years from now no fucked <laughs> we'd be rubbish starting, would it yeah, yeah. yeah we'd be back to we'd caveman by then game, like. yeah everyone would have got nuked and it would be game over <laughs> like, it would just be rubbish Wait, it's a hypothesis that's oh, for sure it's gonna man. happen yeah but like that, that is so crazy when you go to like even like gory castle when was the last time you went there you see it all the time yeah and after i when you have to like go away for a long period of time to like realize the beauty we have on our island you go down to like Plemon and stuff like that and you go to look at all these like cliff sites and barley and stuff like that. And, oh, it's really beautiful. On a good day, right, when you go down to Plemon and the water is like, like crystal clear, it's see-through, you can see Guernsey on the other side. Okay, the water is cold. But like the beaches are crazy yeah. over here. The beaches, like the views, you're never more than 10 minutes from the sea. You've got cliff path walks, gory castle and stuff like that. Like where, where, other, where else do you get like massive medieval castles where they used to hang witches and like <laughs> neolithic passage graves and stuff yeah like that. it's crazy it's underappreciated for yeah sure, and you for don't sure. you really don't like appreciate that kind of stuff you know and now that i'm older like that and you start appreciating them more i went to rome actually in italy obviously did not <laughs> Rome, Rome or Italia, the pizza place on the road. Did you like see that. the Colosseum? I did see the Colosseum and it's crazy, mate. It's huge. Yeah. The place that blew my mind more was a place called the Forum. And I think it's like, I think it's the place of like the most UNESCO heritage sites. What's UNESCO? In, what's it? Oh, Is that a company? The, I think it's a company, but it's like a, it's an acronym for something. Oh, okay. But it's like a world heritage site. It stands for... Yeah, sure, something that sure. breaks it down and it's basically like this place is old okay. and we're protecting it all right and there's lots of like all these old like gravestones from like 400 bc and stuff like that and then it's like where all the old romans would go and have like their baths and like everyone would meet for like political things and stuff like that and you just look at some of the gravestones you're like what the hell it's uh-huh. insane like where would you like to go you've done a lot eh 
I've been I've been to a few places. You've done a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I'd like to go, mate. Loads of places. Europe's on my list to do. Just just like, to jump around, bro. Just I've got jump a lot around. of friends that just like. Asia does not appeal to them. They're like, I'll go to Las Vegas. <laughs> what? Why? Yeah, yeah. I'll go see the Eiffel Tower in Las Vegas. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Let's go to Paris. Yeah, I'm not too fussy, mate. I think I'll, I just need a break from here at some yeah, point. Yeah, that's all. I just need to get out of here for a bit before people or oh, I proper settle down. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. When when like you can't when all the windows close and you don't really have them. You've got to do it beforehand, mate. That's the thing. Yeah. Sometimes I have like a fear of like times running out for me and I'm trying to fit like four separate lives into like, I want to travel as much as I can. I want to go to South America. Like I would love to go to like Colombia, Brazil and all these places and then just check all that out. But then I've done majority, I've done a lot of Asia, like through Japan and Laos and I went to India and I had to leave because of COVID when that happened. That's a scary place to be when COVID is happening. India? Yeah. Like right in the middle of Delhi, they're beating people in the streets get the and fuck out of here mate basically yeah it happened do you know what this was like the weirdest thing that happened i don't what's that um i think it's called contage or contagious or something like that it's a film yeah Contain. i've seen it yeah yeah it's basically it's, like a covid it's movie basically like COVID, covid right yeah and we were in the uh hostel in the morning when covid was about happening and they were watching it on the tv in the morning i went out and got food and then i came back in the evening and it was a similar thing on the tv but it was the indian prime minister saying that they're just closing all the borders and stuff and i was like is this happening? Is this still the film that's going on? This is like an eight-hour film. For and sure. I was like, who's that? And they were like, that's the Indian Prime Minister. This was Thursday, and they were closing everything by Saturday night. Like, you got to get out. And I ended up, like, booking a flight, like, that night to get out. But in a rush, I did it. It was supposed to be for 7 p.m., and I accidentally booked it for 7 a.m. Because I was like, get me the fuck out of here. Like, this place is... And I went to the airport, and they were like, oh, you can't, like, just buy an extra flight and then get on to a new one. And I was like... Mate, I've still got teeth marks in my passport from when I was like, get me out of this place. Yeah. Like, I was freaking out. <laughs> I had no stuff. And I was like, oh my God. All the boards were like red, cancelled and stuff. I was like, I'm going to be stuck in New Delhi. Forever. Yeah. I'm just lit, eating off like curry for the I've rest of my I'm life. I've basically emigrated now. I know, mate. Do you imagine? But like, what, have you, what about Asia? Have you never no, thought? Like, because you've you to were, Thailand. You read South America as well. South America yeah, Cuba. Would be unreal. I used to read a lot about like the Cuban Revolution. Yeah. And Apparently it's the pretty missile pretty crisis over there. Yeah. I just want to see what it's like these days. It's all like stuff in the 50s, ain't it? So, because yeah. of... Uh, but I'm keeping an eye on you know, like the geopolitical sort of aspect of the world at the moment. You know, there go seems out to and be sort some issues. Nah, there just <laughs> seems to be sort of like lingering in the air. It's like, you know, we've got what's going on in Gaza now. It's like... You have to be careful of where you go these days. Yeah, I mate, mean, Israel's somewhere where I've always wanted to go. And that's another thing with traveling. You meet a lot of people. I was actually thinking about doing something similar to like a, a channel because I was thinking I could travel to a lot of places throughout the world. Mm. And like, mate, you can train with someone for like three or four like weeks or whatever and you come so close to them because you're going through this like daily struggle with them. And like you know, you, you're you all on this like same mindset and you've got to motivate people and you become so close to people over such a short period of time. My friend Ashish, uh, an Indian dude, um, like this this man will like die for me. He's such a such an amazing guy. And I know if I went to India, he would like house me and stuff like that. I've got like loads of people in India I'd meet, Germany, Israel, like America, uh, France, like people I've met all over the world that, you know, I've met just through doing this sport yeah, and stuff like that. For sure. and it like put in my traveling parts and that all together, which is crazy. Like that's that's another reason why I do it as well, because you meet so many people. Traveling, like, it will open your mind, like for sure, without the sound of sounding hippie ish, you know. Every time I talk about it, but like I've I've definitely, you know, it's like open your mind, man. You find become, yourself. You find yourself. I found myself. I'm a dick. <laughs> all right. I've, I've worked it all out. I've worked it all out, but like you know the, the the world's bigger than jersey man when you realize like you, you've got to go out there and we're evolve not, or be extinct man we're not the center of the earth mate, yeah I'm, as much as, likes, is, as much as they like to think it is as much as i love this little not, nine by five we've got to get out of it it's beautiful else. yeah is, is it good being like a because you're quite a prestigious photographer is that helpful when you're on your travels you get to document it, and I guess. Yeah, yeah, mate. Do you know what? That's one of the things I like doing the most when I'm out there as well, because everything's so different, you know. It, it, There's no way I'd... Go. <laughs> I've done it a couple of times over here when I go out and do, like, some street photography and that. 
but there's nothing exciting about a piss head on a bench, you know, <laughs> like in the parade park taking a photo of him. I'm not getting hands thrown at me for taking photos. Or, you know, there's there's obviously stuff you can capture, but if you put your f- camera in someone's face down King Street, they can they can have a go at you. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Are angry anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, everyone's angry at something, but when I'm away, you know, just like. I don't know, someone cooking food on the side of a road or people living in these like small nooks and crannies and stuff like that. It's interesting, you know? Mm. It's untraditional from our way of life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it helps me like capture like the real side of it out there and that as well. Because I, I, I don't necessarily, I don't know, not that like, I'm, I'm taking photos for people who can't go out there, you know? But like, it makes me, it helps me document it and stuff like that as well, you know? Because people realise, you know, I remember I went traveling with my mate Jack and I left him for two days, yeah. And he got too drunk and I think he ended up getting robbed <laughs> and beaten up and like <laughs> left like eight kilometers away from his hostel. Yeah, I left him for two days, yeah. And he lost his phone with everything on it from traveling. Jeez. Then he'd be like, have you got those photos? And I'd be like, you know I've got those photos because like, I'm making sure I'm documenting everything yeah. as well. Gives you purpose as well, doesn't it? It gives you the uh, rationale to like to actually travel to a specific location and see, oh, this is really going to be beautiful, so I better head over there. I okay. couldn't wait to go to India. You know, they got that holy festival, like when they throw like all the colours around. The tie dye. Like yeah, 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 I couldn't wait to go there. I always wanted to go and photograph that, and when it happened, I was just like, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. Like when I went to Japan, everything over there is like a photo opportunity, man. It's oh, they're so living cool. in the year 3000. I'm they? not even joking, <laughs> right? When you, like, obviously, you've been to Bali, you've been to Thailand, stuff like that. If you ever go to, like, Vietnam and Laos, it kind of, like, Vietnam is, like, still well built up, but anything in between, like, Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi is just, like, rural. But then when you go to Japan, you're like, this is how Asia's supposed to be, mate. They are living in, like, the year 3000. It's not like they're, like, flying cars. It's, it's the cleanest place I've, like, ever been. I've so, never been to Singapore. I've heard it's pretty clean. But, like, people won't even take your rubbish because they want to, like, recycle and stuff like that. Is that a weird transition seeing like the aspect of a third world country compared to like a thriving country? Does it make you see things from a different perspective? Like? But it does in a sense, but then it's like, see somewhere like Thailand, I wouldn't necessarily say it's like third world, obviously, because I'm just so used to it. It's just like organized chaos and that now, you know, like food off the side of a road oh, is sure, fine, sure. you know, but like there, they won't even take your rubbish. But if you leave your rubbish on the side of the road next to like this one area, people are going to come pick it up. You know, this is like, everything's on time. Uh, you're not going to be cooking food off the side of a road. People are like, I went to Japan and I was like, oh, I forgot I can't wear like flip-flops and like pajamas and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Because everyone's like fashion capital of Asia and stuff like that as well. I look like a scruff on the streets <laughs> over there and that as well. Whereas I'm, if I'm there, I'm used to just waddling down to 7-Eleven in some like flip-flops yeah. and like random clothing. If anyone see me over here, I'll be like, I'm not homeless, I'm sorry. Japan's huge, right? Is it overpopulated? Is it super, super busy? I, I think, don't know too, I think like, Tokyo, too much about it. Tokyo is the biggest, biggest, biggest metropolis in the world, I think. So it's like, I've, I've looked at like going to teacher and stuff like that before, but like the houses you get are like, you have like a room, maybe about this size, but it's got like your bathroom and your kitchen and that as well, but you slide like your bathroom over and that becomes your kitchen and that. So you like shit where you sleep and that, you know, it's one of those. And you pull your bed out over your kitchen and it's like, really well done space but it's because it's an ant farm of people yeah. it's packed yeah it's so packed but it's like super quiet everyone just minds their own business and stays quiet what's like everything outside look, look like like the, really modern and that but it's got like super modern buildings and that but they really like focus on keeping heritage and stuff like that as well so you know they've got we, like i feel like that's dying in a lot of places we i don't know what's with all the te- advanced technology places like Things like architecture has just fell by the wayside. You know? We were all quick to build like office buildings yeah. that look it's the same over r- here. Rinse though, and repeat, rinse and repeat the same office building. But when's the last time you've seen some immaculate church be built? It just doesn't yeah, happen no, anymore. Right. What's it there, like the Grad the Familiar? What is it, the one in Barcelona that's still t- it's like being built for like 800 years? You know, the big like spire one? No, nah, I ain't seen going. that. You would have seen like photos of it and stuff in Barcelona. It's like this big like gothic looking spire the never the netherlands have really cool like gothic looking structures man. yeah mate yeah, yeah do you know where it does have you ever been to edinburgh no edinburgh from scotland that's like where jk rowland got the uh ideas for harry potter oh, okay so like i guess edinburgh castle and stuff like that is all based off of yeah i've heard scotland's actually beautiful i love it mate that's well like, obviously all my family are from scotland and stuff and same 
Yeah, yeah, same. Well, do you support Celtic? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm many. I'm many, many but, but I don't, don't pay attention as much as I should. About yeah, it. Really I, I'm slowly falling out of football. Oh, I just can't be asked to keep up with it. I'm not letting a sport make me angry. So all my mates, like 30 year old men in there, like, it lets them, like, it <laughs> ruins their day. Yeah, like, I don't know really. why. It's, I've always found that super peculiar, especially when you're arguing over like 13th and 14th place out of like a 20 league really? table. You're like, like well, it makes no like, difference. Your team shit. Like, if I was in year eight, I was like, no, we're not. Now I'm just like, all right, well, this is going to be the same next season. And the victory so ephemeral, like so short lived, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, it just happens it's just, again. Yeah, the next season it. just keeps continuing. I love like the World Cup. I've become the most patriotic man in the world. That's probably, I watched the World Cup final, me as dad and uh, what family and. I think that might be one of the only football games I've watched in maybe like a 10 year span. Who was in the And final? it was class. But I won't be doing it anymore. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. Argentina and France. Oh, it was 1 0. It... No, wasn't it like free all or something? I don't know. I could be getting it wrong. But it was. It was... <laughs> That's <laughs> I was, how much you know. I was probably you watching. Yeah, I was watching basketball. <laughs> Slammy D, don't. Everything in life does a 360. It's coming back to it again. Yeah. Um,. We'll have to wrap it up soon, mate. We're running out of time, but I know we both got things to do today. I know, We mate. could fit in a quick... I feel like me and you were one of the very small minority of people who were paying it. We're going to music it up for a couple of minutes. I'm happy to it. music up. I see how you... This is the problem, see? This is why we always have deep conversations and it will just I, I know. reel off. And we've been meaning to talk about certain subjects, but we just... It's, it just goes on. That's, what, that's how these conversations go. It's absolutely fine. All it means is you'll have to return for a sequel. <laughs> No one's going to want me back on. Bring Callum Jones back on. He's got so much to say. Or it's like, he doesn't, he you doesn't know, shut mate. the fuck you know, up. You like. become an Eddie Bravo. Like. <laughs> we should just do this. We just get super blazed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm not good. <laughs> just, then start asking politicians to come on. Yeah, and they'll yeah. be like, uh, I'm all right, mate. Thank you. I've seen your show. Yeah, you're drug so. addicts. Yes. <laughs> but I reckon me, me, we're in the small minority of people, mate, that like followed the... Uh, ascension of like the emo rappers you know like little yeah. peep juice x which what was all that about me that was such a good wave to ride if you're following it and then it just it died fizzled out. out in this sort of i don't even in general mate we're just people that have liked good music like, that's another thing that yeah, actually like we bonded over a multitude know? of genres too, yeah you know? like and it's not like like sitting here like you're in like a death metal t-shirt <laughs> you know what i mean and it's like we this don't, is this is Ollie Sykes' brand from Bring Me the Horizon. Oh, what is it called again? Drop Dead. Drop Dead, that's it, yeah. yeah. Rock and roll, man. <laughs> but like, no, but I know what you're saying. It's something that like I used to be ashamed of when I was in school. To like, I would listen to like Slipknot in my headphones, but like quietly, because people were like, corner, you yeah. little goth. Like, everyone was listening to rap. Like, I've always listened to hip hop and rap and like grime and stuff like that from a young age. But if you listen to that, you're a little goth. And we're both like, full of music titles as well, which yeah, I've never yeah. even really thought of until now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. I've just got working on my Little music. homages and little uh, pain. That's it. Giving nods to people that we like. But, um, oh, man, I, I, I miss the... Do you think that will ever happen again? I felt like, you know, the Juice, Peep, X, all them lot, that little accumulation of group of people was like the new pop punk. Do you know what I mean? It was, yeah, it yeah, was so, so catchy and it just resonated to a lot of the youth and a lot of young people were like, these are my new idols, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you don't really see that in amongst the music community anymore. You might see it in individuals, but you never see it as a as a genre, it's as a collective for like group. one genre. But that whole genre just seemed to like reach the stars. And then obviously it every went, single went. one of them is dead now, so, <laughs> which is bad. Yeah, shit, all three of them are actually dead. But that's what I was going with that is it's like it's... It was like an off branch of the music we liked, like, you know, like Blink-182 and like punk and rap and stuff and it yeah. was them mixed together and it was sad music and that as well <laughs> i don't know it reached out to i think during that time i remember going through like a bit of a, a tough time in that as well and those songs like spoke to me yeah it's that's like it that. isn't it, it? yeah it, and it was speaking to me and did i who, did i show you little peep um you might have showed me peep I don't know. You've definitely shown me someone. I can't remember who. I remember showed you Placebo. And you, yeah, that's uh, it. You got me onto Placebo, who I ignored for years. And I don't know why. I think, who was it? Someone was like, listen to Placebo, listen to Placebo. And I was just being like, no, stop asking me. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Now I don't want to. And then I actually did. And I was like, why have I been so ignorant? I think it was a like, little peep that I ended up showing you because you were already listening to like Juice World and stuff like that as well. But that stuff was so good because he was like, he was like a rock star, a rapper, 
but then he was also not scared to be emotional. Yeah. And like, I don't know, he's like, I love this like fashion and stuff like that as well. Like someone, like I was saying, you would be like scared. In school, I would have been scared to wear like a drop dead t-shirt that looked like Slipknot and stuff like that. And I was like, well, why am I being scared to like yeah. wear a Slipknot? And like, I've had my hair like dyed pink now. I've got what? Well, I've got a nose ring and stuff like that. And people would be like, that's gay. What was that? And so yeah. if I had this in, right, when I got my nose ring done, my friends were like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, like, it's a nose ring like yeah it doesn't make too much of a difference yeah they're more honest with themselves do you know what I mean yeah, yeah and yeah. they look cool do you know I'd never get covered in face tattoos and that I would love that. I may so, so, would you not I, mean, I, no, I would never touch my face with tattoos I but, think um, I would but not when my mother's on this earth <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, she would cry shout out D, D yeah. shout out D shout yeah out come D. on um, but yeah, it's just everything about them is cool. But it's what you said. It's like emotional music, but they keep you company, man. It's like, it's music to listen to at night, in the morning sometimes. It's not too heavy. You don't have to pay much attention to, but they're just so they're, catchy. They're a diverse like group of people as well. You know that 17 album by X? Yeah. That that album's insane. Because he used to do a lot of like heavy like screaming stuff as well with his rap. Yeah. And then he's obviously really good at rap. And then that one was like a, like a suicidal one almost as well. And it was like a really heartfelt album and stuff I've, I remember putting it onto people that I know that just like love like really heavy metal music and all that and they were like this album's incredible yeah yeah and I was like it's so good it is it was me uh, I'm, I'm, I kind of miss albums like that being released but Do you know I don't what? think it will ever happen again it's all over now I, I remember <laughs> I think it is unfortunately and it might be good for a, a good thing as well because so many people were dying off like they were glamorizing, doing like lots of Valium and yeah, lots of like, and like a prescription drug. Prescri- yeah, it was a prescription drug thing, right? Prescription what was it? Oxycontin and all that as well. It's a massive thing, yeah, yeah in fentanyl, America. Fentanyl, which is huge. It. Fentanyl's huge in America at the moment. That's killed Tom Petty. It's killed Prince, mm-hmm. uh, Mac Miller. It's brutal. Uh, just loads of people, loads of like, and it's, yeah, it's upsetting. But it's I think upset. what impressed me of them lot is they were so young. I mean, I, I don't know how they're doing all that at like 20, 21. 21, can you and imagine? They, like, and when it, I was 21, I didn't have a clue. And it wasn't mainstream, I think, as well. I always like to see things that aren't mainstream break in and become this super popular um, aspect of, like, music. So, you know what I mean? If you watch, like, the Peep Doc, when you see him in the underground clubs and there's only, mm-hmm. like, 15 people and him on a microphone and it's only really them and their people boys. It, and I always thought, yeah. if we managed to do that to some degree, that would how fun would that be, being that a 20 be or you got 15 people, then in your next club show and you got got 100, then you're on world stages. Like, that must just be for such a young kid at the... That's probably could, part of it as well. Some parallel. I don't know what you could compare that he, to. It was places like he was like blowing up in like Russia and stuff like that, where he was like super popular yeah. and that as well. But that's probably half of it, you know, as well, because he would have been like a little sad boy and then he would have been getting drugs thrown onto him and that as well. And then people just like pushed him for his demise and stuff like that. And that's one of the, I was with, so someone who put me onto him was Simon the Freighters. And I remember he had tickets to it and I had missed it like a weekend of uni and I didn't want to go to it because I was like, oh, you know, I wasn't a massive fan of him and I was at a bit at the time. I didn't go to it and because I didn't go, he missed his flight because he's unreliable and can't get up in the morning and then he died a week later oh, and I was like, oh my God. That happens, eh? And that's another one as well when you and Kieran went to watch Lincoln Park and you asked me to come along as well. Yeah, we went to Lincoln Park on, I think, the 7th of July. Yeah. And then Chester Bennett and killed himself on the 20th of July, which is like a couple of days later. And I remember and I was like, I couldn't believe it, mate. I was a Lincoln Park fiend. And same with Juice, mate. I went to go watch Juice World, yeah. was in the crowd waiting for him. I was getting hyped, you know, singing Floors and Sins to myself. Let's go, trying to get the people around me excited. Five minutes goes by, he's not there. Ten minutes, twenty minutes goes by, he hasn't came on stage yet. They put signs up on the board saying, oh, due to unforeseen circumstances, Juice World will not be performing today. And he's dead? No, he wasn't dead. He was just, <laughs> he he was just dead. fucked up. There, the it was something to do with flight or locations, apparently. But I thought you were dead. I was like, that's a story. And uh, Jesus. Yeah. No, he died later. Um, that was at Redden. I think he died in December, December the 8th, <sighs> same day as John Lennon. What gigs have you got coming up that you're going to go see? Um, I haven't seen a good gig in ages that I want to go see. Might go to Download, might go to Bring Me the Horizon in January, um, but the tickets. I'm I'm fed up of going to concerts because obviously it's hard. I'm not fed up. I love going to them and I wish I could go to more, but the... The tickets are being sold out in under a minute, yeah? Oh, and, and then people, being, are, reselling people them. are reselling them for like triple the price it's in ruined, every single band. It, yeah, it's ruined it. Yeah. Like, it's, 
If you're a working class person, yeah, going to a concert's like a privilege now. I remember going to see when I bought tickets. The last one I've seen was Arctic Monkeys, yeah. And I was like on my computer at nine. And then I was like, you know, you have to be in a queue and then refresh it. I didn't realise there was a queue before it. And I was in a queue of 29,000 people and they all sold out. And I managed to get a ticket for like 85 quid for once. It's a joke, man. Yeah, and I was like, what? I, I wanted to go see Coldplay, right? They were playing in like Amsterdam over my birthday. I was like, and I've heard their shows are always just like amazing. They put on a proper show. Mate, 450 quid to see Coldplay. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Sorry, Chris Martin, you're good. Yeah, but just, you're not 400. That's why you're best of going to festies, mate. You pay 300 quid and exactly. you can see like 20 see bands. I don't know if I can do festivals anymore. The camping's right? a bit vigorous, and uh, <laughs> the that after like 15, I am literally, it's so daunting. I don't want to be camping at all, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, mate, that's going to be brutal. I remember like there's times when, when but, we've but, been at Reading and I was like, you just don't like, you just party for like three days. Hmm. You don't shower really. Before you, the music want, starts, if you get there on a Wednesday <laughs> and then you're knackered for the weekend. Wednesday till Monday. Yeah, that's coming great. on. I remember coming back on the flight and I was still wearing my wellies because I lost my shoes in the mud and I just had joggers filled in mud and I was just on the plane like, yeah. <laughs> just and you get back into your time. tiny bedroom and you can still hear this weird ringing and then yeah. you get the sleep paralysis comes. We won't go into all of that, but we'll end it this way, mate. If you're around next August, there's a big rumor Blink might be at Redden. So if you wanted to, I turn, will. I do know what. I and will there's an apartment down the road. I've been in not camps the last. I've been to Redden about seven. You're times. camping in their garden, have you? Uh, I went to Redden seven times, I think. And the You've last been to seven times. Yeah. Jesus and the last Christ. time I went, I uh, I didn't camp. And it was class. It was nice having a shower was, in the morning. Yeah, I yeah, bet, I was mate, like, yeah. Oh, I'm Sleeping fresh. off that little bit of a hangover yeah. rather than like but someone pissing on your If tent. it's Blink there, should we go? I'll be there, mate, so for sure. Best. No, don't do that. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, don't do that. We'll do one more then. You hear so, that? Let's go.